So you're planning a road trip and you need some help navigating with Google Maps. Awesome! Except that it's not going to work. I'm sorry. Well, not entirely anyway. Here's the thing. Google Maps is actually awesome. And I'm going to teach you how to use it in this little tutorial and it's going to be great. But it's not everything you need to navigate an incredible road trip. Hey, I'm Bing from Wonder Bing Travel and I've actually road tripped over 50,000 miles through 46 states with Lexi, my golden retriever. And yes, I use Google Maps for every single trip. But I believe the best road trips cannot be navigated by Google Maps alone. So yes, today I am going to teach you how to use Google Maps, but I'm also going to show you a few other tools that work together with Google Maps to create the best road trip ever. Let's get started. So Google Maps is an incredible tool to figure out time and distance specifically for your upcoming road trip. And of course, that's a big part of navigating, right? How long is it going to take and how far are you going to go? And for the purposes of this Google Maps tutorial, I'm going to use my own upcoming road trip as an example. This YouTube channel is all about solo road tripping tons of videos on all the different parts of that. So last week was actually part one of navigating a road trip. Again, I used mine as an example and I shared how to actually divide up your road trip into parts. Yours may not be very long, but the same basic understanding applies. Here's how mine's going to go. I'm going to spend one week driving from my home in Pennsylvania to Sheridan, Wyoming. Two weeks in the Montana, Colorado, and Wyoming area. So basically in the Rockies in the West. One awesome week with friends in Colorado and come home as quickly as possible. I figure it's going to take maybe about 33 days. So in last week's video, I showed viewers how I start with a US map and then I move down into state maps and use the Rand McNally ones, which I really love, to decide on some of the details. So we're going to scoot over to Google Maps now, introduce you to how it works. I put all of those parts I just talked about into one beautiful, easy to see place where it's easy to navigate the time and the distance. Let's go check it out. So stick around to the end of the video because that's when I'm going to give you the very best possible resource for not just navigating, not just Google Maps, but just road tripping in general. So everything you need to plan a solo road trip. Okay guys, so from here on out, you're actually going to get mini me, which is probably preferable anyway. One funny little thing to note is that Google Maps is actually not googlemaps.com, but maps.google.com. So if you Google Google Maps, this is what you get. And you just click on it and then it will take you exactly where you want to go. Okay, so here we are. This is the main interface for Google Maps. It has come up with my location, which is in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So immediately you can see that as soon as there's a location in here, it's going to show you things about that location on the left-hand side. And of course, the majority of the screen is the map itself. So let's take a look at the map for just a moment here. We are going to be much more interested in, in factoring in time and distance to places, but this is what you get when you look up a particular spot. If I wanted to see the restaurants in the area, just a click of a button will give me that. There we go. There's a lot of restaurants and it will also give me ratings and cuisines and so many, many details. You can also see across the top that it will show you hotels, things to do, museums. So lots of different things that can be very helpful down the road as you are honing in on specific places. But our primary focus today is going to be navigating, so looking at time and distance. Before we dive into that, I want to show you a few other features here. So this is pretty interesting. You can click on satellite and instead of getting the regular view, you'll get more of a satellite version. And I like this one as a hiker, um, the terrain view. So you can see here, I live near the Appalachian Trail and you can see that it's over, I think it's probably it's up here somewhere so this is the Appalachian Trail up here and so you can see very clearly the mountains there and the rivers and all the things you can also see traffic and if you're biking then you can show it shows you bike trails as well you can zoom and it will give you more detailed information about the area that you're zooming into there's also something called Street View Okay, to use the street view, you just click on this little guy down here and then 
you can hone in on an area that you want to see close uh, get a closer look at so let's zoom in here to front street i'm going to click here all right and so you can see we are now on front street in downtown ish harrisburg and it allows me to even go down the street by clicking on this button and i can click and drag and look at the view i can see what's on either side of me i can go all the way around this is a really nice feature when you are looking and scoping out a hotel for example a place that you might be staying by yourself you're not sure if it looks really safe or not i use this a lot when i'm looking at uh, places to stay because i am a solo traveler much of the time so those are some of the features of the basic part of the interface of Google Maps when you're looking at a specific place. What we're interested in today though is navigating to a bunch of different places. So let's do that. And you do that by clicking on directions over here. So as soon as I click on directions, I'm going to get a different screen. So my first destination is actually going to be Sheridan, Wyoming. This is the first of my main places that I'm going to be staying this summer. So I just type that in there and it's going to compute. Now notice that I have Sheridan first and Harrisburg second. So I'm gonna switch those around by clicking on these two buttons so that I get the traffic going the right direction and all of that. Okay, so you can see really nice view here. Here we are over here in Harrisburg, going to Sheridan and it shows me a couple of different options. Please note that this is always going to give you the fastest route unless you tell it to do otherwise. And let me show you what I mean by that. So right here you have an options button. If you click on that, you can choose to turn off the highways. So if I do that and say avoid highways, we go from 26 hours and 1800 miles to 35 hours. There's still about the same number of miles, but notice that what it's done is taken me off of the highways the entirety of the trip. I love the no highway option. I believe in taking no highways and many legs of road tripping, but you need to know that if you do it like this, it's going to affect the entirety of the trip. I tend to use it more for individual legs instead of the whole thing, because this does add nine hours to your trip. But you'll see a lot more interesting stuff. Of course, there are quite a few other places I'm going than just Sheridan, as I told you earlier. So I'm going to start putting in a couple of other places that I'm going to be going and show you how that works. So you just add the next destination. So I'm going to add town of Red Lodge, Montana. I know that's one place I'm going to go. And it's just going to keep adding it to the list. I'm going to add Livingston, Montana. And you get the idea here. It just keeps going. It affects the time. It affects the mileage. It's just showing you. And again, I think we have the highways turned off. So let's turn them back on for now. So we have a 31 hour trip now, but you can see it's finding its way around to everything. I actually put all of these in here and I'm going to switch over to the screen so you can see what it looks like. These are all of the places, main places that I'll be going. Let's take a quick look. Red Lodge, Livingston, Moran, Wyoming, Edwards, Colorado, Westcliff, Colorado, Breckenridge, Colorado. And then I added home back in here again so it would calculate the mileage back home. All right, this is a long drive, friends. This is 73 hours of driving and 4,700 miles. So I am doing that over the course of about 33 days. But this is so important as you're navigating and trying to figure out what you want your trip to look like because this may be shocking to somebody who's like, this is what they thought they wanted to do. And then they actually put it in here like, oh my gosh, I, I, I'm not going to drive almost 5,000 miles in 73 hours. I need to make some serious adjustments to my trip. So you can see here, it does give you a really good idea. For the last part of our tutorial, what I'm going to do here is take a lot of this away. And I'll show you why. Get rid of everything except for Sheridan. One other thing to note is that you can put up to 10 destinations over here, but that's your limit. So if you start to need more, then you'll have to you know, either open another one to figure out a certain leg of your trip or 
just um, start eliminating some of them. Also, one other thing I didn't point out is it's going to defer to driving, but if you were walking or riding a bike or flying or taking transit, then it would give you other options there. You can figure out those as well. Okay, so we're really going to just focus on this leg of the trip this first week because it's just too overwhelming to do all of the things and try to plan it all at once. First week, it's not even quite a week. It's five nights and six days from Harrisburg to Sheridan. If I was doing it straight through, it's 26 hours on the highway. I'm not interested in that. I've decided to take a much longer time and I wanna see some things along the way. So I'm actually taking a quite a different route. And this is where using the US map and then honing that down into the different state maps is really helpful, which is what I did last week. I figured out those individual places. So now I'm going to show you what those are, put them on this map and see how this is adjusted. So let's scoot over to this map where I've already put them in. I've put my places in here. They are Angola, Indiana, Sparta, Wisconsin, Grand Forks, North Dakota, and Lewis and Clark State Park which is in North Dakota, and then finally in Sheridan. As you can see, I took a very different route. I'm not going straight across. I'm going considerably out of my way, and it is going to cost me about six hours of, in doing so, If again, if I stay entirely on the highways, which I will not. But this is a choice I made. This is where I've let Google Maps show me what is the quickest, and I know I have a great starting place. So I know now, and this is something cool to show you, over here, if we go to detail, I can see how long each leg of the trip is. From my original starting place, that first day, I'm going to be driving seven hours and 20 minutes. This is that marriage between paper maps and Google Maps where I have looked at the looked at the paper maps and kind of figured out where I wanted to stop and then I go back to Google Maps and plug it in and see how long it is. I've already done some of that back and forth so now I'm just showing you the end result. So I've already committed that yeah this is going to be a seven and a half hour drive but I'm fine with that. My goal is to get out west. While I want to see things along the way I don't need to putz around for the first couple of days. I just want to get a lot of miles under my belt. So I'm going to knock out a lot of driving in those first in those first days. Okay, these next couple legs really are much less driving. Um, it may seem like a lot to you depending on where you're coming from and you have to decide what works for you and this is how you let Google Maps do that work for you. But for me, this is what I am excited about. I've spent quite a bit of time honestly breaking this up into a way that makes it work for me so I'm happy about that. And again, this is all highways and I love that it gives me the turns. I can also, when I'm finished, with this, I can send it to my phone, I can share it with someone else, or I can print it. Okay, one more thing, and I know I keep talking to you about highways and no highways. This is my philosophy, and know that this comes from years of experience. I will leave this setting for highways for now because this gives me a general idea of how things are going to go. I'm actually not even going to use this Google Maps when I am on my trip. This is for planning purposes only, at least for me. So once I'm on my trip, I know that that first day I'm gonna be driving seven and a half hours. I'm probably just gonna go from A to B as fast as I can. But as I get a little bit further out, each day I'm going to really look at the route, and especially if it's a shorter one, where are the places that I'm going to wanna to stop during the day? I look for me, I look for places like hikes, places for Lexi to go swimming, um, small towns that are really fascinating. That to me is the joy of road tripping. So even though the heart of my road trip is yet to happen and it's going to be out west, I don't wanna pass up the opportunity to seek wonder while I am on this first week-long leg of my road trip. So that is Google Maps in a nutshell. I think it's very intuitive, it's not complicated, and you've seen a lot of the features now. But remember, you wanna use it to your benefit. If all you do is GPS, you are going to miss out on so much of what this country has to offer, or if you're traveling overseas, don't just plug it in and go. You're going to miss out big time. So here is that precious resource I said you absolutely should not plan a road trip without. It will enhance everything that you are thinking about. And it is this, 
There's Wonder Around the Bend. It's an inspiring guide for solo road trippers. It is my number one best-selling book, and it is about far more than just a checklist because a road trip should never be just about checking things off the list and going as quickly as you can and planning every single second. You need time to breathe. You need time to seek freedom and wonder and find out what's around that corner and make that turn or stop in this town or do all the little things. That, my friends, is what a transformational road trip is about. And that's what I write so much about in this book is the idea of freedom and wonder and taking the time to slow down and really see what's out there. Open your eyes, look out instead of in, and just revel in the glorious creation that is all around us. So I hope that you will check out the book. I put the link below and it also has amazing resources. There was so much I could not fit in here. So once you buy the book, and it also comes in Kindle and paperback as well, then you have lifetime access to all of the resources. And that includes a lot of navigational tools. I'm so glad that you came to learn about Google Maps. Please subscribe to this channel so that you can learn more about solo road tripping, just road tripping in general, more about freedom and wonder and planning and all the things. And come along for my Summer of Wonder, where I will be turning a lot of what I'm doing here into a vlog as we actually get on the road here in a couple of weeks. And I hope to see you on the road.